I am happy to share that I am starting a new course called Springboard from Zero to Hero. This is going to be a complete hands-on course for learning Springboard. As part of this course, we are going to build a blog application. Here we are going to build a traditional server-side rendered web application using Spring Boot and Timeleaf. Also as part of this application, we are going to build REST APIs as well. Usually you will have either a traditional web application or REST APIs, but for the learning purpose, we are building both a web application and REST APIs in the same application. As a backend, we are going to use SQL database, in our case PostgreSQL, and we are going to use Spring Data JPA to talk to the database. And we are going to use Flyway for database migrations. We are also going to secure our web application using Spring Security. And also as we are building REST APIs, we are going to use Spring Security JWT token based authentication for securing our REST API endpoints. And then we will learn how we can test our Spring Boot application using JUnit 5, test containers and REST Assured. Finally, we are going to learn how we can package our Spring Boot application as a Docker container and run all the application components like database. In our case, we are going to use Postgres, right? So we are going to run both the Postgres and our Spring Boot application using Docker Compose. So what is required for you to take up this course? So I would expect the people who are planning to take this course to be familiar with Core Java. And if you are familiar with Spring Framework, that is nice to have. Otherwise, I believe you can follow along this course and then learn Spring Boot. And who are the target audience for this course? So if you are a junior to mid-level Java developer who want to learn Spring Boot from scratch or you have some experience with Spring Boot but you want to gain more deeper understanding of Spring Boot, this course is for you. And also if you are coming from a different programming language background like if you are familiar with Python or Go or Node.js and you want to learn Spring Boot, this course can help you. Let's take a look at how our application would look like. So here is our blog application that we are going to build throughout this course. So here, as you can see, you can see a list of posts and you can navigate to older posts or newer posts using pagination. And also you can look at one particular post details here. You can see who posted it on what date and you can see the post content. And also if there are any comments, you can see like this or you can create a new comment to an existing post. So here I would say, okay, let me create another comment. So here, as you can see, as a guest, I haven't yet logged into the application, but as a guest, I can create comments on the post. And then if you go to home page, you can also search for a post. So let's say I want to search for spring. And as of now, this is going to match with the title. If the title contains a keyword spring, it is going to include in the search results. Okay. And then I can log in. So here, we can say login and once I successfully log in, now I can either create a new post or here I can see this edit post. So I can click on this and I just want to update the content so I can update it. So here it is updated. Okay. Or I can create a completely new post. So automatically it will uh, take the title and convert it into slug. But if you want to change it, you can change it and then you can write whatever the content you want to write. So once that is created, you can see if you go back, you can see the new post here. Also, we have validations in place. Let's say we have title, slug and content. They are all valid. Uh, required fields. So if you do not enter any of the mandatory fields, it is going to show these are the required fields, not only for edit post, 
also for new post if you try to save any post without providing the, all the required fields it's going to show these errors in addition to the web application we also have rest api so if we go to uh, swagger documentation here we can see there are various api endpoints and then an endpoint to authenticate ourselves so let's say uh, getting post uh, this is not any authenticated one so let's try it so here i make a call and here i can see we are getting the data with all the post information and also contains the pagination information also we can authenticate ourselves let's say we are going to try out the login api here email is admin at gmail.com and password is admin so if i submit it here i got the access token jwt access token i can take this and i can authorize myself now i can perform authenticated actions so here let's say post i can create a new post here try out and title my new post to and slug would be i can give any slug i'm giving it and the content is my second post and i can submit it so here i got the response as 201 which means successfully created so this is how i can use rest apis as I mentioned, in the same application, we have both a web application and REST APIs, but this is not usually done. But for our learning purpose, we will get to know how to build the web application and also how to build a REST API so that you will learn uh, whichever you want to use in your application, you know how to do this. I hope this is going to be very useful for you and I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.